Hi, I'm Greg Dell here with attorney Stephen Jessup. And Steve, I want to talk today about a, probably one of the more challenging or complex issues in a disability claim, which deals with the concept of being disabled, basically undisputably, and working at the same time. And a lot of people aren't necessarily aware that they can do this, whether it's an individual disability policy or a group disability policy, but it, it brings up a lot of challenging issues often because the disability carriers will sometimes say, well, um, because you're working, you're not working up to the capacity that you can and therefore we don't think you're disabled or they'll try to say that the loss of income is from something else, not necessarily from um, the disabling condition. But w what is this concept of disabled and working? And well, it's going to come usually in, in two contexts. Some policies are going to explicitly have a partial disability or residual disability as they're interchangeable usually. Provision that says, you know, if you're working while disabled and you have a requisite loss of income, we'll pay you a benefit. And then on the other side of it, which is very common in employer-provided group policies, is the return to work incentives and, and things of those along those lines that allow you to return to work you know, make up to 100% of your earnings for a period of time before there is a discounting and things along those lines. So it's either partial disability or some type of return to work incentive in a plan. All right, so let's talk about the first one being the partial or working while, while disabled. Um, they almost always have an income component mm -hmm. to them. And, and that is significant because they basically say, usually what I'll see is at a minimum, you gotta have a 20% loss of income from your predisability earnings. There's always a calculation as to how you come up with predisability earnings, whether it's a 12 months before you became disabled or an average of two out of five years. There's a whole bunch of formulas, never the same. It's always in the policy. Those issues are, are in terms of determining what the loss of income is, can be challenging because, number one, if you're a business owner, they may attribute the income of your business to you, which can be really catastrophic in a disability claim. It could be challenging because your business can still be running even though you become disabled and actually making the same amount of money or more mm -hmm. and the disability insurance company will try to say well you're not meeting the income threshold because the business is continuing to run but yet what about the policies where we say like it says income attributable to you you know how do you deal with that situation well, that's one of the biggest things and we've had clients i've had clients especially when we look in the for instance medical or dental profession uh, I once had a dentist where he stepped out of actual practice. He couldn't perform the, these dental duties, but he was still able to manage and acquire practices, and he just kind of managed them. You know, he hired people to take care of everything, and during the course of it, he had multiple insurance companies, and they were trying to argue that because his businesses were very profitable, that was all attributed to him and not the work. So it really came down to showing, no, we got to look at what the predisability occupation was, and is he doing any work activities that are in that occupation that are generating the income that can be attributed to him? Uh, and also kind of a, a offshoot of that also is, what about if you're in a, in a business where you have residuals coming in? Or uh, you're a doctor and it takes a while for certain payments to come through from the insurance company. So some of the income you may have in a given month may be for work performed prior to disability and can't be attributed to the period of disability. So there's lots of offshoots and ways that that gets analyzed and really picked apart. And you know you have to look closely at the policy language because there are some policies that say income for services generated before your dis mm -hmm. disability date won't count as income when it actually comes in mm -hmm. so and also to the effect that you had with uh, business income some policies will say if you're a business owner or have an interest what if you know whatever percentage interest you have in that business the profits of the business will count against you as earned income for that right and then that, that's really challenging I had a lady years ago who had cancer and was clearly not working and she was a hundred percent owner of her business and didn't take a salary or anything but the income that the business continued to throw off was not giving her a 20 percent loss of income and they said therefore you're not eligible and it's really sad because the policy was supposed to protect her if she's disabled mm -hmm. but they're saying but you're still getting that money so it's not necessarily you know you have to always watch that and had this person known to sell her shares which i don't think she should have had to do then she would have automatically had the benefits. So it was a technicality there to say, look, you still owned your shares, and this is what the policy says about income, so you're not getting paid. But let's shift a little bit about the person who says, you know, 
I am disabled, I've been on total, I want to try to go back to work a little bit, which clearly puts you into disabled and working, but they also have this return to work provision in some of these policies, and how do you take advantage of that? Okay, every insurance company hopes someone goes back to work so they can, you know, avoid their li uh, liability. Um, return to work incentive, rehabilitation, well, they'll actually retrain you. Typically, at most of the return to work incentives, what they will do for the first 12 months in your attempt to return to work, they will allow you between your disability payment and what you're earning at work to equal 100% of what you used to make. Um, so they won't cap, they won't reduce down, so you can basically make your prior earnings. After that 12 month period though, any earnings either will work into some type of factor where it's a percentage of the benefit or in some cases become a dollar for dollar offset under the policy. So in that, they're giving the person the opportunity to try to work um, while still collecting the disability benefit. Um, it's a way for the insurance company to avoid long-term liability and it also provides the insured a lot more protection than just trying to go back to work and hoping that it does work because you're still actively on claim. Uh, and a lot of times the insurance companies during that time frame won't be problematic in the hopes you're going to go back full time in whatever it is you're doing. But you also have to realize that any time you do attempt to go back to work, even if you can, it's going to always put in the back of the mind the insurance company, well, maybe he's not as functionally restricted from working uh, as we thought, so let's continue to look. And those return to work incentives are usually in ERISA, group disability policies. So we're talking policies that will only cover you from your own occupation for a period of time. So if you go back to work in something else and you seem to be doing okay, it's an easier road for the insurance company to say, we think you'd be able to do some other occupation you've shown you've had ability to work. The other thing in some of them is that if you go back and earn more than 80% of your predisability mm -hmm. earnings, then they say that right away your benefits end. And the problem with that is, is that if you're a company that doesn't have that policy anymore, then you, that's it. So you have one month where say a commission came in or something and you go above that 80% threshold and the next month you go back to the 70% loss, they're going to cut you off mm -hmm. and say your policy basically is over. Mm -hmm. So you really, really have to monitor your income on a monthly basis if you think that um, you want those benefits and need those benefits to continue. That's a big problem. The other thing I've seen more on the private disability policies is when you don't have the requisite loss in a particular month, some of the carriers are asking you to then go ahead and pay premiums for that month. So, you know, because you weren't eligible on a partial disability basis, and then some of them could possibly argue, well, maybe you need to file a new claim, but they shouldn't be able to do that because you have that concurrent mm -hmm. disability that usually says if you go at least six months and have a recurrence of the condition, then it's the same, um, the same claim. I don't agree with the fact that you should get at least six months of trying to go back to work before they take the premiums again under that concurrent disability. So. That's another issue that we've been seeing a lot lately. So the bottom line is that if you're thinking of working while disabled, you really gotta be aware of all the financial implications of what you're doing, the continued medical support that you're gonna need and what the long-term impact's gonna be on your policy, especially if you have one that requires you to be total for a certain period of time before you can be residual, or they say you can only do this return to work while disabled for 12 months or 24 months. So every policy has its own nuances. We're happy to provide you with a free consultation. Uh, we'll let you know immediately whether or not we think we can assist you. We offer our services nationwide and we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.